Well, welcome. Today we are speaking with Nick Cirillo, best-selling author of A Slice of Pie, How to Build a Big Little Business. And Nick is the founder and CEO of Nick's Pizza and Sub, founded in 1995. A couple things that I enjoyed about reading uh, about Nick is there's like, I'm a big fan of the rule of three and I love talking about, hey, what are three things that people can remember? So number one is the fact that uh, in the top 10 independent business, busiest stores in the United States, uh, which is really a big deal. Secondly, which was really impressive, was the fact that margins that are double the industry average, and uh, my big passion is people, and obviously when you can impact people, what's really important is the fact that a turnover rate in an industry that averages 150%, Nick and his passion for people and his business is doubled less than 25% in turnover. So Nick is in Chicago. He's building a store right now. You can hear the saws going. Uh, I think he's probably got a tool belt on. He might be hanging drywall uh, as we speak. But uh, Nick, one of the things that, that is really important to you is culture. And I think what I understand about you is you're a great storyteller and people love stories. Uh, we buy stories. And so what I want to do is just ask you a little bit of questions around what's going on. And we can talk a little bit about this exciting event we're having in Dayton uh, at Aileron, which is a real gift to our community. You'll be here uh, in August the 29th and 30th. Uh, you'll be speaking to us here in, uh, in our community around uh, your gift to, to entrepreneurs and business people. So sorry for the long introduction. Welcome, Nick. I appreciate that. It, you know, the more you could uh, talk about, you know, this stuff, the less I have to talk. So it's okay. I'm not comfortable with that. And I really appreciate, you know, obviously we got a little bit of construction. Um, I appreciate the flexibility and uh, actually I'll show you a little bit around here. Um, since I'm here, there's a the new fireplace is building in the restaurant and a little bit of noise, but not too bad. Um, so yeah, I think this, you know, you know, honestly, it's uh, it's fun to have the opportunity to, to talk with you and have that flexibility of, you know, I'm in like so many other business owners, right? I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. I, you know, trying to fit things in a day. We all struggle, right, with all those things in a day, and you know, it doesn't have to be a struggle. It could flow. It could, you know, it could all come together. We could do you know, just have some flexibility and be able to work with each other. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that we're able to do that today. And uh, even, even as I model trying to balance a gazillion things at once, two restaurants and open another one while we're in this interview. Well, one of the things, uh, you know, thanks for creating jobs and obviously you're growing the economy because we can not only, we can hear it and uh, yeah, grateful for that, which is yeah, just yeah. awesome. So hey, kind of unpack for us, like what led you to write this book, A Slice of Pie and How to Build a Big Little Business? You know, it's interesting. Um, I never thought in a million years I would write a book. I, I don't know. Um, I, honestly, I don't know specifically that anything, any one thing in my business is as I was growing a business led me to write the book. Um, the book was an outcome. You know, the book happened uh, because of, I think it's a great example of each of us in our businesses, how we give back value, we create value in our business, create value in society. And rather than pushing hard to try and push a sell or discount a sell, create value in our society and with other people and things will come, right? The the money will come, the opportunities will come. Um, not that, not that we make any money from writing a book, but you know, those kind of opportunities happened. I, you know, me ended up in, you know, an ink magazine that was all a result of taking care of my people, wanting to build a company that was, that took care of people first, you know, doing those things first. It, it might be a little bit, longer way to go you know it's not that fast quick american way like yeah. i want it now you know yeah. but honestly i believe it's a more sustainable vet uh well, i think what you know i think what i hear too and, and especially like in chapter one one of the things you talk about is like know who you're all about right 
So I think what, what I'm hearing from you is, you know, a lot of things that you've done in your business and that creation of that is because um, that's just who you are. So you care. Yep. And if you, uh, you know, they, they, they you know, do the right thing, the right things will, you know, happen to you. What, what kind of led you to like build this mission? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. To that point about know, you know, when I say know who you are, it's not just know who I am as a person. It's also, it's also a metaphor for know who we are as an organization. And that's, so now to that point mission and we're um, even, you know, even what I learned through this journey and, and this didn't happen right away, but I, I've actually learned just that difference of why I don't even call it a mission. I call part of learning who we are really stems from purpose. Yeah. And there's a difference for me. I've learned, you know, I know there's, you know, there's some great people doing a lot of great work out there. Simon Sinek is one. And, you know, and, the, and a lot of them will say, oh, there's no, you know, difference between mission and, and purpose. And for them, I don't, I don't, I, that's probably true. And a lot of companies it could be, um, I found, I found that if, as I'm leading 200 people in our company and I'm leading high school students, college students, moms, you know, all these different, you know, from Hispanics to Polish to all these, all this different variety, I found that I need to actually differentiate those, those nuances about, and the difference between mission and purpose is actually important, you know, yeah. actually makes a difference because we have, we have mission, right? We'll, we'll have a mission. The army's got a mission to me. The mission and the vision are more future oriented, right? A to be statement is more of a mission statement to be something. And that's great. It has a place in our organization as well. We do have mission teams. For me, the purpose is who we are here and now, and it's, and it's present tense. So if you notice, even in our purpose, it doesn't say anything about a to be statement. I mean, to be dedicated family, right? Our dedicated family, right? It's a collective I statement. So now the team owns it and it's also in the present tense. So, so back to, you know, to build on your question, um, I think where this really started, there was an intuition for me, it started as an intuition of, you know, I knew there was something more in how I ran my business. Um, and I was seeking some, you know, someone or some, you know, reading about, I started reading about, um, about Howard Schultz's book about Starbucks and how he started, started reading about um, John Mackey and how he started Whole Foods, things like that. And then I met Rudy Mick, who was my consultant back in 2001. And he's the one who really brought to light this work for me. And that was a really transformational period in my life when I learned when he, he helped us actually define our purpose as an organization and define our values as an organization. And when, I, when we got done with that process with me and 12 other people in my company, mm -hmm. um, I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. This is really, yeah. this is our competitive advantage because we just defined it, we just defined who we are for one, but we're all, as we're defining who we are, we're also defining the culture that we want to have in our organization. Instead of the, the normal process is to, just to show up to work and the culture is what it is. Right? Yep. It is typically, which could, you know, is the loudest voice in the room, which is good if it's high performers, right? That's great. Or, or a lot of, like for me, the culture was me, which is fine for one restaurant, right? For one office, you know, right. that's just not a scalable model. Right? Yeah. We but talk finding, a lot about that is, you know, if it's, if it's about you, it's about a personality. Yes. Yep. And there's a big difference between a personality and a business. Yep significant difference so you know obviously wanna you know i, I want to i feel like i want to pick up my laptop and move around uh, but I'm, I'm afraid if i touch this thing we'll get disconnected uh, so i'm gonna stay right here but you know I've, I've read that you know in life life's a wonderful teacher and she rarely gets an apple on her desk so uh when we make mistakes and we're vulnerable man we learn a lot so what are what are like like one or two mistakes that you see either yourself or, or other businesses make along the way we only have an hour, right? So you just want one or two? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, 
you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, it's, it's different for each, you know, for each business. I would say I, I could speak to my mistakes and the ones that have had the greatest impact um, in some of the, so I don't think, you know, I didn't open, I didn't open with purpose and values, right? I was like most entrepreneurs in America, right? I, I knew how to work hard, you know? Right. And, I saw, and I saw an opportunity, even though there was a gazillion restaurants, like a lot of entrepreneurs, I saw a gap in the in restaurant industry. I saw a gap that was missing around experience, creating experience for families. And, and so in that gap is where I said, okay, this is where I'm going. And that gap actually, you know, I experienced myself with my own family. So that part, I, you know, I don't think I would change that. I mean, I think that's pretty typical. You know, I just worked my butt off until yeah. I got to a place that's like, okay, I'm profitable. Now I can start building a company, right? I, that's okay. Um, and it took me seven years to get to the purpose part, you know? So, right. so if I can make that a little shorter, for sure, yeah. you know, I could do that after two or three years, that'd be great. Um, so that's one is, you know, when you, I would, you know, I see, I see that a lot of, a lot of folks aren't identifying, even if you could just start out with the values, maybe not start out with the purpose, but even starting out with what's important to me, you know, and my values and, and getting clear. If I could have been clear about what those values are, even as a starting point, I'm going to start building this. I would, it's almost like a quantum mechanic. I mean, quantum, quantum magnet, because on a quantum level, that energy level, we're starting to that clarity about defining what's important to us and who we are and how we're different starts attracting more people. And that's what the tribe thing starts happening. Oh yeah. Um, so, so that's important. The other part is I, on one level, I wasn't, although I, I knew, I know how to make money because I know how to work hard. I think more so than anything else. It's not like I'm a financial advisor, you know, but I, um, that's the way I was brought up, but I wasn't, I don't, I think one big mistake was, and this is what I would share with others is the big mistake I did is I didn't pay attention enough. I paid a lot of attention to P&L. I didn't pay enough attention to the balance sheet. So yes. I was really focused on daily operations, which is great, you know, but if, as we're growing, that's fine for one restaurant again, but as we grow and we start to take on debt and start to, you know, even, you know, if it's a manufacturer, start to take on debt and start to take on inventory and things like that. The, the balance sheet to me in, in, a, in a projected, I looked at a cash flow statement, but it's, you know, it's almost like an autopsy in a way. It's already passed. But a projected, a cash flow statement that projects to the future. So we actually built the cash flow model. So a cash flow model tied to the P&L, tied to the um, balance sheet. Now that's, that's a mistake I think, like myself, I made. That was probably my biggest mistake is, is that taking on too yeah, much. We see a lot of people that might drive their companies through like their rear view mirror, yes. which is just reports. Yes. And yeah. you, you, your analogy of a balance sheet is really, it's, that's like the windshield. Like, it is. what's the future look like? How am I going to build this? How am I going to expand? You're expanding, you're expanding now. Right, right. Uh, and, and I love the fact that, uh, and you're right, because if you don't spend time understanding what your individual purpose is, it's not, um, I think, one of the most powerful words in the English language. There's two. Uh, the first one is to always stay curious. I yeah. love the word, just curious people. But what I see in you and what, and what I hear about you is just, is just be authentic, right? Yeah. Just be authentic in that. And that creates... Uh, it's, it, it's contagious. So it's contagious. Uh, when it starts being contagious to your people, it becomes contagious for your customers. Yeah. yeah. Scott, you're spot on. And, and I actually so spot on. I think it's actually even more important this day and age because mm -hmm. it's, it's unfortunately it's become unique, you know? Yeah. So I think there's people, especially the younger generation, it seems like to me that are craving authenticity, vulnerability, not, not that they're craving people to be vulnerable, but that's part of off being authentic right. is people that aren't afraid to be vulnerable sometimes. It's just a deeper, richer authenticity that's unfortunately a little bit rare these days. Well, and don't you also find out that just life's more fun? I, in my experience, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like yeah. you're having fun today. 
I am. I am. I am. So thanks have you, have you thanks for your flexibility. Have you ever been to Dayton? I have not. Not yet. No. So we're we're going to welcome you with, uh, you know, uh, open arms. Yes. Uh, at uh, at uh, Aileron, which is yeah. might be one of the greatest gifts in our community. Yeah. So it's an uh, entrepreneur center just really kind of built to help private enterprise and help employers get jobs, keep jobs and grow their business with passion, which is really important. So as you're coming to Dayton and thinking about coming to Dayton and talking about your book and talking about your passion, what, what are some of the things that you might be excited about talking to us about? For one, I, you know, to, I'm grateful for the opportunity, especially um, hearing and knowing and reading all the things Aileron stands for and the things you're doing. And um, what I'm really excited about and what I've been getting a sense of throughout this time the last few months is that I feel like I'm stepping into a place of like family, my, like my people, like our yeah. people, right? We're so um, honestly, when I started this work back, back in 2002, when I talked about purpose or values, sometimes I felt like I was talking Chinese to small business owners. And, and now we have this opportunity yeah. where people you know, are coming to a conference and they're, and the door is opened up a, a little crack, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I could actually step in there and I could help open the door maybe halfway as much more. Holy cow, that's a huge opportunity. So I'm happy. You know, that, that's, I love talking to folks like this who, who are, are in the place I am now or in the place I was a few years ago. And I could help them with shorten their learning curve and maybe save them thousands of dollars at the same time and help yeah. them build a healthier life for themselves and a healthier life for the people that are around. I'm excited about that. And I don't know if I could pinpoint one specific thing. I mean, sure, purpose, values, training, uh, trust and track leadership are all really important elements. But I don't, I'm not attached to any one of those things. I'm there for the people that are there. And whatever questions come up, whatever direction we can you know, go that really resonates with them in this moment for wherever they're at in their phase of life and business, that's, that's where I want to be there for. Well, we're really excited to have you. And I think, uh, I, th I think God gave us two eyes and two ears and one mouth for a reason. Uh -huh, yep. We can sit back and just watch somebody and listen to somebody. And, and if we're authentic and willing to, willing to learn, I think you're going to teach us a lot. For our listeners, go to aileron.org, uh, check out Lyft. Uh, there's a lot of great speakers. It's going to be a terrific event. Uh, and we're going to be talking a lot of different subjects. Nick will be there. He'll join us. I will. Are you going to bring us any pizza? I wish I could. I wish, but, I, but while we're out of there, it's one of the things I'm going to be asking you is, let's scout the area. Let's find that next location for Nick's while we're there. We're there. The Midwest Maybe. is, you know, obviously growing up in the Midwest, it's close to my heart. So. Exactly. Well, yeah. we want to thank you for your time. Yeah. And well, uh, thank thanks you for the opportunity much. One coming to Dayton, speaking with us today. Check out uh, aileron.org. Look at Look, uh, Lyft. August 29th and 30th, and we, yes. we see you there. Yes, join us. I'm excited for this. Thank you very much.